morning San Antonio starts right now. Temperatures have slipped into the teens and 20s this morning, but if thaw is on the way, warmer temperatures this afternoon, your forecast is coming up. And we still have some highway closures this morning. I'll let you all you need to know to get around. And good morning, everybody. We have finally made it to Friday. It is February 19th, and we know this has been a trying week on many, many levels, but today is our day of change. That's right. We are looking forward to the weather change and many changes this weekend. We begin this morning with uh, the power being the number one thing on many people's minds. Right now, the CPS energy outage map shows this. If you guys could close that one window, that would be great because I cannot see what is on the dashboard. Otherwise, we can move along. But it looks like we have very few without power. We will continue to monitor this throughout the morning. I think the last check, it was about 8,000 customers without power. So. All right. Well, it looks like that window is stuck right over the most important numbers. Let's move on. Nearly all school districts are closed today. North side, northeast, Judson, Harlandale, and SAISD will all reopen next week and will not hold remote classes. You can see our full list of school closures on KSAT.com. You can also check your school's website. Many districts have sent out emails to parents. We also have that scrolling list of closures at the bottom of your screen. We call it a crawl that will happen throughout GMSA as we've been doing all week long. So real quick, an update on those outages. It looks like there is a total of 353 customers affected and also uh, 21 active outages. So 21 outages affecting only a couple hundred people. Yes, and then uh, customers affected 353, which is amazing <sighs> compared to what we saw this week, over 300,000 to 353. Also amazing temperatures later today. We just got to get through early this morning, right, Justin? That's right. Just uh, several more hours here and we're going to be in the sunshine. We're going to be in the warmer temperatures. I will tell you, though, the clouds have cleared and temperatures are plummeting this morning. We're down into the low 20s here in San Antonio. There's teens on the map, so it's another hard freeze this morning. 21 degrees at the airport, 17 in Boulevardi, 22 in Tarpley, and we could fall several more degrees before this is all said and done. We are uh, possibly going to see some teens here in San Antonio. So just a, a heads up there. But uh, as we zoom out some, it's 15 Kerrville, 27 Carrizo Springs, Del Rio. We're still not getting reports there. But yesterday, they probably picked up about 9 to 10 inches of snow. That's some of the reports we're getting out of Del Rio. A huge snowfall there. So likely still some snow on the ground. And with whatever wind we do have this morning, it feels like 15 here in San Antonio. So the, the winter chill is still here. As we get into today, though, 44 degrees, the high temperature, mostly sunny skies. That's great news. We're back down into the 20s tomorrow morning. And if we see a little bit of fog, we could see some freezing fog on your Saturday. We do have to warn you about that. That could cause a few slick spots. 56 degrees. And then by Sunday, we're back in the 60s. Boy, won't that feel nice. And some pretty good weather next week, too. We'll have more on that in just a bit. But let's get over to Samuel now. Probably still a few issues on the roads. Yeah, we have uh, a few closures, not as extensive uh, as we did yesterday or for the past week uh, for that matter. This is I-10 at the Y. We do see uh, some vehicles here. The blacktop looks dry, so, th so that's a good thing. They've done a good job, TxDOT, of getting out there and treating uh, some of the major roads. Uh, but we do have a couple of incidents. First, let's start with a uh, crash here on the west side. This is at General McMullen and Commerce Street. We understand that this is a rollover, and we're gathering some more information on that, and we'll bring it to you later this morning. And we did mention the closures here. This is one 410. Uh, excuse me, 151 here, uh, the entire length of the highway. They've had major issues this week, and so that highway remains closed at this hour. The main lanes. Main lanes of Loop 410 also remain closed from 151 all the way over to 35. Uh, right now, the frontage roads are open and passable. Also, the same story on 281, and you might see people driving on 281 occasionally, but uh, it is, as last check, it is officially closed. Uh, again, use the frontage roads there if you can. Uh, here's an update from the city of San Antonio. Uh, the police chief telling us they've responded now to more than 1,400 calls for crashes since Sunday. 15 police vehicles have been involved in crashes. One SAPD officer was injured responding to a crash over the weekend and understand he is still hospitalized. Uh, Public Works says 40 city streets were closed at last check and they sanded 79 bridges uh, to help uh, get them back open. So the situation will improve later today, but watch out for some slick spots this morning. We'll have another update soon. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. 
At least 50 people are without a home after a fire broke out in an apartment building, causing it to collapse. It happened around 1 p.m. yesterday in the 4000 block of TPC Parkway. People living there told the firefighters that they got an alert to turn off their water heater. And moments later, a fire broke out on the second floor of one of the complexes. Crews say they had to bring water because the hydrant at the complex was frozen. The fire expanded to other US units, destroying the building and eventually causing it to collapse. Right now, there's no word of any injuries. This morning, we are waiting to learn more about a search for undocumented immigrants in far south Bear County. It all went down yesterday at a gas station at 37 and Loop 1604. The sheriff says a caller reported seeing about 200 people running from a semi parked at the gas station. They discovered it is a refrigerated truck. Now, deputies did catch some of those migrants and they say they're doing okay. Sheriff says he's worried about those who ran off, concerned about the very cold temperatures we saw overnight into this morning. If you can spot anybody, report at 210-335-6000. We will continue to follow this story throughout our newscasts today. Well, the San Antonio Food Bank offering some relief to those affected by the historic deep freeze. Starting today, the food bank will have seven, seven mega distribution sites. Our Stephen Cavazos is live there now with the efforts that are underway. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, the food bank and the weather actually had to force the food bank to stop distributions for some time, but they are ready to get back to work today. And these seven mega distribution sites will definitely be a huge undertaking. Now, the first of those mega distribution sites will be here at the San Antonio Food Bank starting today at 10 this starting today at 10 this morning and last through four this afternoon. Now, this will continue at various locations through Sunday. Now, the goal is to get about 100 pounds of food and water to thousands thousands of households and families that have been impacted by the recent freeze. Now, the San Antonio Police Department, that is, will assist with deliveries to the elderly and some of the most vulnerable in our community, but road closures could impact delivery times. Now, again, the first of those mega distribution sites will be happening here at the San Antonio Food Bank later this morning, starting at 10. And for a list of all those distribution sites, you can head over to our website at ksat.com. There's a full list already posted for you there, but coming up later on GMSA, why the food bank is asking for your help in their efforts to get food to those in need. Back to you guys. Thank you, Stephen. Edgewood ISD will be distributing meals curbside this afternoon. Now from 2 p.m. until 4 p.m., anyone under the age of 18 can get a meal at the Fine Arts Academy located in the 600 block of Southwest 34th Street. Now to receive the meal, you need to show a report card, progress report, birth certificate, or a parent portal printout. A screenshot or picture on these documents on a phone is acceptable. Meanwhile, San Antonio Water System is giving water to those in need. There will be several water distribution sites at pump stations, and we have a list right now on your screen and on ksat.com. These sites will be open from noon to 6 tomorrow. Now, here's an important note. You need to bring your own clean containers, such as jugs, to fill with water. Each person will be allowed to take home up to five gallons. As a precaution, the water should be boiled before drinking or used in cooking. We also want to remind you that KSAT We'll be hosting a Q&A with Robert Puente, the CEO of SAWS, tonight at 630. You can watch that on air on KSAT.com or on the KSAT TV app. And time now is 408 and 25 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, the need for blood in the Alamo City is still dire. Details on when you can sign up to save a life. Plus, boiling water seems simple enough, right? Well, some people may not be doing it the proper way. Coming up next, how to make sure it's safe to drink. Outside with live cam, this unbelievable weather week. We are about to put it in the rear view mirror. We just have to get through today, waiting for those temperatures to go above freezing and stay there for a while. We'll be right back. Until further notice, San Antonians have been asked to boil their water to make sure it's safe to use. And you may think how to boil water is a no brainer, but some people may not be doing it correctly. So here's how to make water safe for consumption. First, fill a pot with water and bring it to a boil. But once it's boiling, let it boil for two minutes. After two minutes, turn off your heat source and let it cool. All right, so once it's completely cooled down, pour your water into a clean container, cover and store for use later. For more information from SAWS about how to boil water, uh, go to, or rather about the boil water notice, sorry, go to ksat.com. And time now is 412 and 25 degrees for now. Uh, head on GMSA, a schedule change for the KSAT Community Blood Drive. Details on when that uh, much needed event has been moved to. 
And let's take a look outside with Transkai this morning. There's I-10 at the Y looking very empty this morning. Of course, probably uh, not too safe uh, being an overpass. And there's uh, 281 Divine. You can kind of see the sheen on the street, so probably not too safe right now. All this week we've been dealing with uh, dangerous roadways, so we're going to check in with Samuel after the break to see how our roads look today. We made it to Friday after this week, and it's been a heck of a week around here for sure. I know I'm always excited for Friday, but today even more so. We all are. Let's get an update on traffic right now. Some of these uh, ramps are snow covered this morning, and I'm, I bet they changed over to a little bit of ice as well. Yeah, you can pretty see this is a, another view of the I-10 at the, uh, the Y ramp here, and you can see uh, uh, the snow cover. So we've had the upper levels there closed pretty much all week, and you can uh, see why, how uh, the, the dangerous conditions there. Uh, for the break, we were looking at uh, 281 at, at Divine. You can see uh, we've also been watching this this week because it gives an idea of sort of on an elevated surface surface what it looks like and you see that's just a sheet of ice and our Katrina Weber is out and about this morning and she confirms that 281 uh, is closed uh, the entire uh, length between 1604 and downtown and and this is why uh, let's take a look here it is right there you see that 281 closed and again just a reminder uh, this is uh, the downtown closures the fine silver curve I-10 the upper level at least from Frio to the interchange there. Now here is a wide uh, view of the area. It's like everything is like a little slow uh, to move, but uh, things looking a lot better than they have. But again, we have uh, several uh, closures. Also have this crash here on the west side, a rollover, General McMullen and West Commerce Street. And we'll get more information on that as we go out through the morning. Let's go out to the Hill Country now. Pretty serious situation. Uh, the city providing an update uh, yesterday evening, and I don't think much has changed. Uh, driving conditions are dangerous on the road, snow covered, truck deliveries delayed. Uh, so they've had power restored, so people have been leaving the shelters. But the concern out there is because of the driving conditions, especially yesterday with the heavy snow, uh, they've had trouble getting to stores like Walmart, and, and for, for instance. So that's going to be an issue over there today. Hopefully, the thaw comes. Things improve, things can get moving. Also, fuel scarce in that area. Another reason you might want to hold off if you're heading uh, west on I-10 I until some of these things improve. And so we still, we're, I guess we're over the hump in a lot of ways, but we still have some pretty serious situations around the region, guys. Thank you, Samuel. A bunch of records fell this week, didn't they? A lot of records. Uh, I was trying to compile some. This is sort of a crude list. But was it a record number of records falling? <laughs> yes. Yes. I, it, it really just is incredible. I mean, when we look back on this, this is historic in so many ways. But these are just some of the records I was able to compile here. It's the eighth coldest temperature on record when we got down to nine. That was Monday morning. Coldest since December 23rd, 1989. Uh, we had the two largest snowfalls since 1985, two separate snowfalls in one week, 3.7 inches, 2.5 inches yesterday. And then the second snowiest winter all time, 6.4 inches when you combine those two, plus another very light snowfall in January. And then the second longest stretch below freezing at four days, 12 hours. We came up just 90 minutes short of setting that record. But uh, there, there will be more records falling. Yesterday, too, Del Rio saw a record amount of snow. We know that, so uh, yeah, it's just a week to remember for sure. Time lapse shows that uh, we had some clouds earlier. They have since shifted out, and that means temperatures are plummeting this morning. 21 degrees at the airport. West northwesterly winds at about 5. Dew point is down there at 15. 21 Bernie Stage, 25 Canyon Lake, 24 Castroville. We're in the teens in Hondo, 18 there, 15 in Kerrville. And looking at the uh, wider view here, 27 in Creso Springs, 30 in Kennedy. So we're below freezing area wide. Wind chill values are in the teens too. 15 is what it feels like here in town. There's just enough of a breeze to make it feel very cold. Here is the good news, and this is what we need to hear. We're going to get above freezing pretty quickly this morning once the sun comes up. And we'll be in the 40s this afternoon. That will thaw everything out. Of course, that may reveal some of the issues with our pipes and things like that. But we'll work through it. Uh, Northwest really winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Visibility. This is the future cast visibility. No fog this morning. But as we get into tomorrow morning, there could be some patchy fog and visibility may come, come down. Normally, this wouldn't be a big deal except for temperatures going to be below freezing again tomorrow morning. We could get some freezing fog, which may develop a little more ice, 
on some of the bridges and overpasses. Hopefully it won't be a huge issue. It'll all be very light, but we'll keep you posted there. Next few days, we got 44 today, 56 tomorrow, 64 on Sunday. That number's huge. It really does warm up. That cold air gets pushed off to the north and east. We're back into a more typical weather pattern here after dealing with a very atypical weather pattern for about a week or so. And the uh, mild temperatures will stick with us. So again, 56 on Saturday, some of that brief morning freezing fog. We'll get some dense fog on Sunday morning too. 64, 65 Monday. We're back into the 70s by Wednesday and maybe a slight rain chance. Rain on Thursday with a high of 60. And for those who aren't familiar, freezing fog's kind of like a low key version of freezing rain, right? Yeah, it's just not as much moisture collects, right. but there can be a little bit of, uh, of ice in spots. Yep. Okay. okay. So yep. tricky for drivers, but at least the temperatures are looking good. Yes, they look a lot better. Thank you, Jeff. We're gonna throw a party by <laughs> on Saturday, Sunday for sure. Yeah. Uh, 420, 25 degrees. And food supplies across South Texas, excuse me, blood supply across South Texas uh, still critically low. Coming up next, details on when you can help save some lives and how to register. rescheduled the upcoming KSET Community Blood Drive due to weather. It was scheduled for yesterday and today, but it will instead take place March 1st and 2nd. However, blood supplies across South Texas are still critically low. University Health is encouraging everyone who can donate to do so during the rescheduled drive, and it is happening at the Whitty Museum from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. For more information on how to register, you can visit KSETcommunity.com. 424, 25 degrees. And still ahead in the next half hour, several warming centers are still taking in people who need somewhere to stay. We're going to have a list of those locations. Winter weather may be the biggest thing on people's minds right now, but we are still in a pandemic after the break, looking at the latest COVID numbers for Bear County. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Bitter cold temperatures again this morning. We are down in the low 20s and teens, but it will warm up today. We're going to thaw out this weekend. Your weekend forecast is coming up. Justin, things improving, but we still have some highway closures out there. I'll show you where and how to stay safe. We're on a little earlier than expected for this time, but uh, thanks for joining us. Good morning. It is Friday. It is February 19th. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and we had an eventful week, of course, the temperatures, the roadways, a lot of people losing power. And let's go ahead and check on the power first for the latest on CPS. All right, so we're looking at 22 outages affecting only 328 people. Far cry from what we saw earlier this week. Mayor Ron Nierberg says CPS Energy has not completely restored power to all customers, but as we can see, and this is proof, significant improvements. Right now, the CPS Energy outage map is only going to sh again showing 328 customers without. We'll be following this closely throughout this morning as we've done all week long. And because of the outages and the cold weather, a lot of schools were closed this week due to those winter conditions. Uh, Bandera ISD, Colmel ISD, New Braunfels ISD, Pearsall ISD, and Southside ISD are all closed today. We have a full list of the latest schedule changes on our website at kset.com. You can also check your school's website, and many districts have sent emails to parents. And we will also have all these closures at the bottom of your screen throughout GMSA. Also on KSAT.com, a full list of all the San Antonio area businesses that are open, closed, or have had schedules delayed today through Monday due to the weather. The list is on our homepage at KSAT.com. And again, what an eventful week. I've never been so happy for Friday. So I was just listening to you guys talking about school closures and yeah. thinking to myself, when is the last time kids missed an entire week of school? Now, for <laughs> weather? the pandemic. Uh, for weather, I don't know. I don't know because somebody asked me that yesterday, and I I can't think. Uh, it, no, not for a whole week. No, maybe a day. Mm -hmm. No, and you, you think about all the events we had: freezing rain, snow, freezing rain, sleet, right. then snow. Yes. And Monday was President's Day, so kind of take that maybe out of the equation. But well, some, well, some schools were, were going to go in. That's true. Yeah. But uh, it's just it's been a wild stretch. I mean, uh, unlike anything we've seen in a, in a long, long time, yes. for sure. And, and the numbers are still very cold this morning. We, we want to warn you there. We're down to 21 here in San Antonio, 11 in San Angelo, 10 in Midland. And I like showing this state map because, keep in mind, we're still all on the same grid here. And one of the reasons that we had some of those power issues is because not only was it cold here, 
it was cold across the, the entire state. And that was one of the problems. And that's still the case this morning. But by this afternoon, Texas in general will get to thaw out. Now, that may lead to busted pipes and those sort of things. But again, we'll, we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get there. 16 in Kerrville, 20 in Bandera, 18 in Hondo, 25 Canyon Lake. Numbers are very cold here in our area. Uh, 27 Creso Springs, 30 in Kennedy. Everybody is below freezing this morning, and many places are seeing a hard freeze. Uh, as we look at the wind chill, feels like 15 here in town, 17 in Gonzales, 16 in Kerrville. There is enough of a breeze to create some wind chill this morning. Forecast. By 10 o'clock, we're above freezing, 33. 37 noontime, up to 42 for a high this afternoon. Northwesterly winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. That's a huge improvement. We'll see 60s by Sunday. The weekend actually looks really nice. Roadways still a little icy. We had uh, some leftover snow there. Some trying to dry out, but there's going to be problems this morning, Samuel, I'm guessing. Yeah, and we still have some uh, closures uh, just in some icy spots as uh, well. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone out there. 410, see traffic here moving on uh, the frontage roads, but the main lanes here at uh, Babcock one of the places that remain one of the highways that remain closed again the highway closures not as extensive as they've been over the past few days but uh, 410 on the north side pretty much uh, is should be considered closed the main lanes just move along on the frontage roads that's been the focus for text dot this is i-10 at uh, Wurzbach. you see a car coming there you see sort of the slick spots along the shoulder the main road looks clear, but again, you could watch, watch out for some uh, slick spots there. And as this temperature uh, drops, some of the treatment uh, things might have some issues until it warms up again. So uh, if you have to uh, head out and about on some of these streets, uh, keep it slow. And one more look here. This is 281 at Hildebrand. 281 closed the entire stretch from 1604 to downtown because of those slick conditions. And here's a uh, the heart of the map and just show you again on the map some of these closures. This is 410 as we mentioned and the 281 closure again from 1604 all the way to downtown. And we have the closure here at the fine silver curve, the upper levels of I-10. Still have this rollover being reported General McMullen and Commerce Street. A lot of the city streets are slick and we did get an update uh, from the city of San Antonio. That number of calls for crashes is up to more than 1400 or should I say at least 1400 calls for crashes since Sunday. 15 police vehicles involved in crashes. One officer injured at least one responding to a crash. A driver hit him over the weekend and had to be hospitalized with some pretty serious injuries. Public Works tells us that 40 city streets uh, have been were closed at last check. The 79 bridge is sanded. So again, the city, some of the city streets, we had some thawing and melting yesterday, but they do uh, sort of remain slick. So be careful out there. We'll have another update here coming up, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Fire is still burning at the site of what had been an apartment building in far North Bear County. Firefighters have been there at the complex on TPC Parkway east of Mulverde Road since yesterday afternoon. Our Katrina Weber is there now with a live report. Now, Katrina, we understand dozens of people have been displaced. What has happened to them? Yeah, the last count we had was about 50 people displaced. Now, there is a temporary shelter that has opened up at Johnson High School, which is not far from here. It's a safe bet that many of the people have gone there. Who has not gone anywhere are the firefighters. They've been here all night. Take a look at this. This site is still smoldering and actually some flames still showing. We saw even more when we got here a little while ago. Now, also an unusual site late last night was seeing part of this building collapse. You can see it coming down there. Uh, this fire actually broke out around one o'clock yesterday afternoon. Uh, from what we were told by some of the residents, they had gotten a notice to shut off their water heaters. It was an alert telling them to shut off their water heaters. They say not long after that, they saw flames and fire coming from uh, the second floor of this apartment building here at the Cortland View Apartments. Uh, the people were able to evacuate. Uh, as far as we know, everyone got out safely, but. Um, they have not had a, ch a chance to really go in here and check because this thing has been on fire ever since. Uh, we had uh, volunteer firefighters as well as San Antonio fire who were assisting at one point. Uh, they had some trouble, we understand, with the water. They told us that the hydrants here were frozen, so they had to have water brought in. So that's been a big factor here as well as uh, at several fires that have broken out in the past few days. 
But again, uh, they still continue to try to make sure that this is out here. Uh, a long job that's been going on since uh, 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon and still continues now. Reporting live in far north Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you for the update. Well, a huge undertaking for the San Antonio Food Bank. The nonprofit will have seven mega food distribution sites throughout the weekend in an effort to assist those impacted by the extreme winter weather we've had here in South Central Texas. Stephen Cavazos live at the Food Bank this morning. Stephen, what are they hoping to provide? You know, Mark, definitely a huge undertaking for the San Antonio Food Bank, but they are hoping to provide about 100 pounds of food and water to thousands of households right here in our community. Now, the first of those mega distribution sites will be happening here at the San Antonio Food Bank starting at 10 this morning and lasting until 4 this afternoon. Now, this will continue at various locations up until Sunday. The San Antonio Police Department will also assist with those deliveries to the elderly and some of the most vulnerable in our community, including uh, some medically frail people, but road closures could also impact those delivery times. So, of course, it's important to keep that in mind. CEO and President Eric Cooper said in a statement that the food bank recognizes the community is hurting after the recent freeze. Pre-registration for support here at the food bank is recommended for those who have Internet access. Now, if you cannot pre-register before this event, you can still arrive here and not be turned away supply as long as supplies here at the food bank last. Now, again, uh, they say that they are in desperate need of volunteers, about 500 volunteers here at the food bank. So if you'd like to volunteer, we have a link posted on our website right now. That's at ksat.com. And for a full list of those mega distribution sites, you can also head over there. Again, that is ksat.com. Again, we'll be live here coming up at the food bank later this morning here on GMSA. But for now, reporting live this morning, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Steph. Well, after days of dealing with the extreme weather, it really has been the primary focus for everyone. We have an update this morning on the coronavirus pandemic here in Bear County. According to some numbers from local hospitals, the number of COVID cases is declining. 695 COVID patients are in the hospital, 257 are in ICU, 149 on ventilators. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg says the numbers exclude some hospitals in the area. We are expecting to get a fresh update later today. And time now is 437 and 25 degrees for now. As many of you are still without power this morning. Next, we'll tell you about some warming centers that are open today. And let's take a look outside with live cam this morning. Uh, 25 degrees, looking forward to a warm up today. But of course, right now the roads are still very dangerous this morning. We're going to check in with Samuel at the break. Welcome back. 440 warming centers will continue to operate today for those who need still need a warm place to stay. Let's take a look at some of those that will open in San Antonio and the surrounding area. So the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center, Bear County Fire Marshal's Office, Cross Point Church, and several school gyms. Seniors and families with small children are top priority. Also remember to bring a face mask with you. And time now is 440 and 25 degrees for now. One of the things we're monitoring very closely as we have all week with our traffic authority is Samuel King. Let's take a look at the roads with Transguide and we've still got issues out there, but today is the thing, thing time uh, and date that things are going to change. Wow, look at that big hunk of ice oh, wow. just sitting on that camera at 10 and Culebra. We'll get you updated on what's happening with your forecast today, the expected warm up and Samuel's going to track some continuing road and ramp closures. And also before we head to break, here are just some of the closures and some of the changes going on today as far as the school districts. And for more, you can go to our website at kset.com. Welcome back. It is finally Four. Friday. It's finally Friday and it's what time is it? It's yeah, 444. Yes, in the and morning. It's, and it's 25 <laughs> degrees. Yes, yeah, 25 <laughs> degrees right now. We're yeah, kinda, unbelievable, kinda, unbelievable week. Yeah, that what she said. Mm -hmm. Let's check traffic right now with Samuel King. Well, I want to give an update on the uh, trans guide switcher I have. OK, and I don't want to stretch it too much. But what? if you're watching the six o'clock news yesterday, Adam said it broke into two pieces. 
Uh, oh, okay. Oh, no. All right. That's an indication of how much use we've given this. Yeah, so it's had a, past, quite a workout, hasn't uh, it? A week and a half. But I can report that it is working fine, and our lovely engineers here have been. Better work knock on some wood quick. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we do have some backups in place. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll do that. For uh, you. But, um, but there you uh, go. <laughs> thank you, Stephanie. But. Um, our engineers have been doing a great job, our producers, like you see all of us on the air, but it, it's taken a whole village here basically to uh, <laughs> maintain us, keep us on the air and, and keep us safe during this whole thing. We hope you are safe right now and you're staying off highways like this one, 281 at Divine, 281, the entire stretch uh, is closed. Let's take a look, another look. This is 35 at Pine. Uh, road conditions here are looking okay. No reported closures there on 35, but you should still uh, be pretty cautious. Here's an overview of the map. We'll tell you about that crash again here in just a second. Uh, but uh, again, closures including Loop 410, also State Highway 151 from 410 uh, to 90. And we have here, uh, taking a look out here up uh, north 281 as I mentioned and uh, we have the fine silver curve closure here and we have this crash General McMullen at West Commerce understand this is a pretty serious rollover uh, we'll mention again the situation out uh, in the hill country dangerous driving conditions still truck deliveries delayed for for food fuel is scarce they are hoping out there that this situation does improve but again, it's another reminder why we're saying uh, make sure uh, you delay travel or make sure you have a full gas tank because uh, we were having some uh, issues here when I-10 was closed yesterday because of the snow. This uh, just uh, popping up here in the city of San Antonio again, more than 1,400 calls for crashes over the past few days. And here, this just popped up, so I was looking away here. This is a some sort of a crash or disabled vehicle there at I-10 and Dominion. And again, still some dangerous driving conditions, especially out there where they got some more uh, snow guys. So uh, we're still seeing some of this stuff this morning in and around the area. So we want folks to be safe. Yeah, it looks like a pickup spun out or something yeah. Oh, yeah. Right over there. Right so there mm -hmm. happening Median. as we speak. Justin joined us now and we had enough snow for that. Apparently That's so. Pretty awesome. I mean, yeah, if we picked up oh. six inches total when you uh, look at the two snowfalls together. But this is nothing short of impressive, okay? I mean, I tried to build a snowman and it was so powdery, but th I don't even understand. I'm just impressed. And by the way, San Antonio came through with these pictures. Our KSAC Connect is lit up. I want to show as many pictures as I can this morning because there's so many good ones. But this was out of Fair Oaks Ranch and they said that uh, Alexandra and her dad uh, built a replica of the Alamo here and it's today's lesson for art in Texas history. Homeschooling has its advantages. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so, man. That is uh, that is just... I've never incredible. seen one that... I mean, we usually make itty-bitty snowmen around yeah. here. This is like on a whole different level. Very creative. I, I Just wait. we got more great pictures. But awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. We appreciate that, uh, Christina. Thank you for that picture. Outside right now, you can see the clear skies. And the roads still maybe have a little bit of a sheen, as Samuel has been talking about. So we still have some danger out there, but things are going to improve rapidly once that sun comes up. 21 degrees at the airport. This is a hard freeze. And keep in mind, this is the airport, okay? Out around surrounding areas here around San Antonio, you can easily drop into the teens this morning. We had temperatures in the teens this week. It has been a week of just uh, really, really cold temperatures. West northwesterly winds around 5 miles per hour. 20 in Bandera, 19 Rio Benina, 23 Castroville, 25 Stinson, 31 down there in Pleasanton. And right now it's 16 in Kerrville, 11 in Junction. We could see some single digits up there again, which is kind of hard to wrap your mind around. Windshield values in the teens this morning feels like 15. So if you're going to be out and about, it's another morning where you want to wear layers. But by the afternoon, we should jump into the 40s. We're forecasting 44 here today, which will do a lot to thaw us out, especially with mostly sunny skies. Uh, we've been talking about the possibility for a little bit of fog tomorrow morning. And one reason that's a little concerning is because temperatures will be uh, below freezing again on Saturday. So this fog would be freezing fog. And with that, what you have to worry about are the bridges and overpasses. It doesn't really put down a, a lot of moisture, but there's enough there that could collect where there could be a few more slick spots tomorrow morning. The cold air moves away. The jet stream finally balances out a little bit. We're more uh, mild here in Texas and temperatures will slowly ramp up to more average numbers. 
Uh, but what a week it has been. 56 tomorrow after starting off at 26, and that's why I think we'll see a little bit of freezing fog. 45 Sunday morning, we'll start off with some dense fog on Sunday, 64. And then as we get into next week, there we go, 60s and maybe some 70s before front comes in on Thursday, but 72 right now is what we're looking for on Wednesday. That's going to feel downright hot at this point, guys. <laughs> Unbelievable forecast. Thank you, Justin. 450, 24 degrees. And we are taking a look at flight status at the San Antonio International Airport. That's next on GMSA. Let's uh, check all the lottery numbers. Pick three, one, nine, nine, Fireball three, daily four, three, two, nine, zero, Fireball two. Cash five, 13, 18, 19, 24, 33. Your Texas two step, five, nine, 19, 22. Bonus ball, 27. For more than a century, Mount Zion First Baptist Church has served the San Antonio community and opened its doors to those in need. The church was founded back in 1871 uh, by five uh, former slaves and a white minister. The first Mount Zion Church was a modest one-room building located on Santos Street. The church was there for a long time until 1924 uh, when they marched from Santos Street to this current location and they built this church. Decades later, the Reverend Claude Black Jr. became pastor and led the church to national prominence in the National Baptist Convention. And so much so that uh, Reverend Black became a member of the city council and was uh, one of the first African American, well, he was the first African American uh, mayor pro tem to serve in the city. Mount Zion was a beacon of faith in the area, but in 1974, an arsonist set the church on fire. Everything was destroyed. At, except for one Bible. One Bible survived and we have it encased downstairs. And the church was rebuilt within a year. The people said, we will not let uh, racist and prejudiced people uh, take our joy. And welcome many back. parts of the country oh, still reeling right. from the impact of severe winter weather. The nation oh, is bad. also facing a major setback in the coronavirus vaccine rollout, delays caused by the brutal storms. We have accumulating backlog of vaccines that uh, need to be boxed and shipped. Dr. Anthony Fauci says the U.S. will have to work double time to make up for weather-related vaccination delays. Other health officials are echoing that sentiment. That's going to mean longer appointment uh, hours. It's going to mean uh, more shipping hours, and we're going to ask everybody to do their part. That push is critical in taking on variants of the virus that could fuel another surge. And the continued spread of variants that are more transmissible could je jeopardize the progress we have made in the last month. Dr. Fauci says the vaccine is one of two important tools at this stage. The other, adhering to public health guidelines we're all familiar with. The wearing of masks universally, physical distancing, avoiding congregate settings, washing of the hands. This all comes amid new information on the danger of the virus. One small study from Washington state showing that pregnant women last spring appeared to be at a 70 percent higher risk for infection. And the CDC revealing that the virus was a significant factor in U.S. life expectancy, dropping a full year in the first half of 2020. It dropped even more for black and Hispanic Americans. I'm Reed Binion reporting. All right, we're keeping an eye on the number of flights coming in and out of San Antonio today. Right now, the arrival and departure board is peppered with cancellations and delays, just like it has for the past few days. If you're flying or picking someone up, you can check the flight status on FlySanAntonio.com. And time now is 456 and the screen says 24, but it's actually 20 degrees right now. 20 degrees, a key difference there. Every degree has made a difference this whole week. Taking a look at the roads with TransGuide, we're going to get an update with Samuel King right now. And again, we've got this incident working out there at I-10 and the Dominion just outside Loop 1604. And before we go to break, let's take a look at the CPS energy power outage map. And right now it looks like CPS is reporting that there are 307 total customers affected. We'll be right back.
Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We are now down to 20 degrees here in San Antonio. So another bitterly cold morning, but it does warm up this afternoon. The sun will be out. Your forecast is coming up. And we've got a few crashes and highway closures to report this morning. The very latest just ahead. And a good morning to you. It is Friday, February 19th. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Hope you are staying warm today and we'll get to weather in just a minute, but let's go ahead and talk about the closures today. Several school districts rounding out the week with classes canceled because of the winter weather conditions. Floresville, Judson, Shirt Cibolo, Universal City, Sabinal and Somerset ISD have all canceled class for today and they'll not be holding it virtually either. We have the full list of the latest changes on KSAT.com. You can also check your school's website and look at the bottom of your screen. And this morning, more people across Bear County have power. However, there are still a significant amount of people still waiting for their electricity to turn back on. So let's take a look at the current outages. Right now, we are looking at 308 total customers affected. So that is an improvement. Now, we are keeping a close look at this map and we'll update you throughout the morning. Warmer weather finally on the way. Here's Justin with some great news. Yes, warmer weather today that will be in the 40s for highs. You know, I was just looking at the lows this week. If I had told you that uh, the temperatures were 13, 9, 12, 24, 28 and 20, you would not assume that we were talking about San Antonio, but those were the low temperatures this week. Just incredibly below average numbers. And we're there again this morning. We are at 20 now, but the morning lows will start to get better as uh, we get into next week, especially. Take a look at this picture. We're going through a ton of KSAC Connect pictures this morning just because they're all awesome. We got so many in. Uh, this is from Annalisa. Looks like the uh, maybe the neighborhood got together here and built a snowman. That's 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 a good one. That's tall, impressive. Uh, we've, we've got more snowmen, by the way, we'll show you a little bit later, but uh, thank you for that picture. And there's a look at the numbers. We just keep dropping here in San Antonio. So 20 degrees at the airport and keep in mind that's the airport number. So if you're in the surrounding areas here around San Antonio, it's it's entirely possible that you're in the teens. Now this is another hard freeze 19 in Bolverde, 19 Bandera, 16 in Kerrville and even around Junction. We're bordering on single digits. That says negative one and Dryden. I don't know if that's the case, but I'll check in on that. That would be pretty incredible. Uh, 25 Beville, 16 in Victoria. In the forecast for today, 33, 10 o'clock, 37 noon time. So we're above freezing by mid morning and then into the 40s this afternoon. That will allow for a good thaw. Now we will get below freezing again Saturday morning. Maybe some fog too. We'll talk about that forecast here in just a bit, but some busy roadways again this morning. Sam. Yeah, we have this uh, incident here. This is I-10 at the Dominion just north of uh, 1604. This has actually been on the board uh, for a little while now, but a trans guy providing us a view here still. This is still uh, ongoing. You can see some of the, the crews and the operations going on there. Let's show it to you on the map. Uh, you see there's slowdown uh, here uh, on the on the westbound lanes. Uh, this is the uh, eastbound uh, lanes uh, going there. So this is something to watch out for. They did get a lot of snow out here, some icy roads. They've had some issues out here for a while on I-10, so uh, that's something to watch out for. Still have a number of other closures across the area, including 281 from 1604 all the way to downtown. 410 also closed from 35 all the way over to the west side. 151 remains closed between 90 and 1604, pretty much that entire stretch. See of San Antonio responding to more than 1,400 calls for crashes. I should probably say at least 1400 calls for crashes, 15 police vehicles involved in crashes since Sunday. One officer over the weekend was injured while responding and helping a motorist with another crash. The Public Works Department says at last check, 40 city streets are closed. Uh, 79 bridges have been sanded. Even if uh, the streets uh, or the highways look OK, some of the city streets still have some snow and ice cover on them. So so be careful when you're making way out and about. We'll have another update coming up shortly. Mark Stephanie over to you. Thank you, Samuel. It has been a long night for firefighters who have been battling a huge fire at an apartment complex in far north Bear County. That fire has destroyed at least one entire building and is continuing to burn this morning. Our Katrina Weber is there live on TPC Parkway just east of Bulverity Road. And Katrina, any idea why this fire is giving crews such a hard time? 
Well, we were told that there were water issues going into this. Firefighters told us that the hydrants here on the property at the Cortland View Apartments were either frozen or not working because of water outages. Uh, they had to bring in water on some of these fire trucks. And this is the result of what you see here. In the meantime, the fire continued to do its damage. We have a video from the viewer showing the, as the building collapsed late last night, the fire has been burning since around one o'clock yesterday afternoon. People who live here told us they had received an alert to turn off their water heaters. And then minutes later, they noticed fire on the second floor of this building. And because of those water issues, it raced throughout the building. Volunteer firefighters had help from San Antonio fire. Still, the fire itself seemed to have the upper hand. The last count that we had was that 50 people were evacuated from this building. Now, there is a temporary shelter for them that was set up at Johnson High School, not far from here. And so we uh, would believe that at least some of them have gone there. And in the meantime, though, firefighters going nowhere because, as you can see, their work is not done. Reporting live in far north Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The freezing weather forced the San Antonio Food Bank to stop distribution during one of the most critical times of need. But today, the nonprofit is ramping up their efforts to make sure people don't stay hungry much longer. Our Stephen Cavazos is live at the Food Bank this morning with the efforts underway later. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark. Well, it's definitely been a very difficult week in our community. And, you know, we have the San Antonio Food Bank right behind us and Chief Development Officer Michael Guetta with us this morning to talk a little bit about the challenges the food bank has faced over these last few days. You guys had to stop distribution for a few days. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, we give out um, meals to folks two different ways. One by grocery products so people can cook at home, and the other is by delivering a hot meal. And those hot meals usually go to a homeless shelter or just another shelter in general. And it was the grocery distributions that we had to suspend services for. We didn't have power in our building for most of the week. It was off and on. Roads, of course, weren't safe. We couldn't get food in or out. But luckily, we were able to do those meals to, to all of the folks that were in shelters, maybe even in some of the extra hotels, and, of course, for the homeless. You know, and, and we're ramping up our efforts today, as we've been saying throughout the morning. This is a huge undertaking, seven mega distribution sites for those in need. You know, what do folks at home need to know about this? Well, one, um, we're going to have food. We're going to have food this weekend and all of next week. We know there's going to be some desperation. Um, and so I would say plan accordingly, pre-register if you can on our website. Um, you can also call our helpline number just to find out where to go. But we're going to put about oh my goodness, maybe 100,000 tons of food at each of these distribution sites, both here at our main warehouse and across the city. Try, try to be strategic north, south, east, and west so there's an easy place for people to access food and at different times of the day. Well, hey, we appreciate it, Michael, and all your efforts here at the Food Bank. We're going to have more with Michael and the Food Bank coming up later here on GMS State. Mark, Seth, back to you. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio Water System CEO and President Robert Puente joined Mayor Ron Nirenberg at yesterday's briefing to give us an update on the water situation across Bear County. Puente says saws will help customers with their bills since water was used to help keep pipes from bursting. Also mentioned saws working with the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality to try to lift the boil water notice. He says there were no line breaks and no contaminants. And later this evening, we'll be talking to Puente during KSAT's Q&A. So join us live at 6.30 p.m. And we just want to let you know that KSAT always has you covered. Everything you need to know from the uh, boil water situation to power outages, school closures, even how to go about frozen pipes, that is available on our website at KSAT.com. 508, 24 degrees. And let's take a look outside with Transguide. There's a look there at I-10 Dominion. Uh, earlier it appeared that a truck had spun out there, but we're gonna check in with Samuel after the break. Keeping you and your family safe during rolling outages. Coming up, a few tips from the American Red Cross. And taking a look outside with live cam, we know your screen says 24 degrees, but it's actually 20 degrees. So a little colder out there this morning, but boy, are we looking forward to those warmer temperatures. We're gonna check in with Justin later on.
512 right now. Most of us have or may experience in the future brief power outages due to the high energy demands here in Texas. And that's why the American Red Cross has put out a few do's and don'ts to keep you and your family safe. Now, one of the first things you should do is surround your food with ice in a cooler or refrigerator and do not eat food exposed to temperatures higher than 40 degrees. And next, add carbon monoxide alarms in your home if you use a generator. And finally, do not use candles for light. Opt for a flashlight to prevent any accidental house fires. And I know it's late in the week, but I was telling people kind of casually off the cuff all week long, when it's this cold, you can actually set food on your back porch. I know, I was so mad. I didn't, I didn't think about, about that. We talked about it, didn't Yes, it? we did. Yeah. I was like, oh, well, Yeah. I was going to say next time, but hopefully not. <laughs> if it doesn't get too, too cold, like when I lived out east, that's where we put soda. All right, and, it makes sense. Well, and, David Sears did that as well. Yes, he did. Yeah. So do our other beverages, wink, wink. Uh, 513, <laughs> 24 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, making sure you don't get taken advantage of during a public emergency. What you need to know about price gouging and how to report it. All right, so the temperatures are going to change later on, but we're not out of the woods yet on the roads. And we've got a couple of incidents out there. Samuel is busy. He's tracking things. We'll get an update from him. to the doers, to all the people who realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. And don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Talk to your asthma specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. And welcome back. It's 517. Yeah, that's my water bottle. Thank okay. you. <laughs> you good. Yeah. What would happen if we had a cappuccino machine down here? You mean like it, bottles would be falling, the uh, froth would be everywhere? It would be awesome, it would, Mark. It's a great idea. I, I just <laughs> thought of that. It'll never happen. Uh, <laughs> we need to check on the roads. It's been a rough week, and uh, we've, we've been joking a lot this morning about the fact that we are finally at the tail end of this, but we're not out of the woods yet, are we? Uh, no, Mark, and we still have a lot of uh, scenes like this where we have abandoned or, or stalled vehicles on some uh, of the ramps and some of the highways. This is 90 at uh, General McMullen, and SAPD says it's actually been working uh, with TxDOT to clear uh, some of these uh, vehicles uh, from the roads. But here's one on uh, 90 and General McMullen there, just, just one uh, of the many that have had to be uh, Drivers have had to leave them uh, behind for the weekend, so you might see, still see that out and about. Uh, back to I-10 and Dominion. Within the past 10 minutes or so, uh, this was cleared. This was on the, had been on the board for a couple of hours at least, uh, but those uh, lanes are clear, but you can still see the sheen and the cover uh, on the road, so you'll want to be careful uh, in that area. Of course, this is I-10 at Dominion, just past 1604. You can see the traffic flow there improving westbound and eastbound, but again, still some slick spots around the area. 410 remains closed from 35 on the northeast side all the way over to 151 on the west side. We've been mentioning the situation up here in the Hill Country and Kerrville. Still dangerous driving conditions reported. Uh, some deliveries have been delayed. Fuel scarce uh, just because of the issues we had yesterday with the snow and some fuel depot issues in San Antonio. That's according to the city of Kerrville. So again, if, if you need to travel out uh, west on I-10, uh, just keep this in mind. You might want to delay your trip until later in the afternoon once the weather improves and maybe these trucks can get on the move and get some food and fuel out to these stores out there. They've been dealing with this for more uh, than a week now, so uh, definitely a dangerous situation, guys. Thank you very much, Samuel. Earlier, uh, Justin showed us about a four or five foot tall snow Alamo, and mm. now? This one's cute. I mean, the talent <laughs> of some of these, uh, the, the people working with the snow, it's just incredible. Oh, this, whoa. obviously, is <laughs> Snoopy. Yay! 
Hey, Snoopy. Uh, on his doghouse. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they got the Spurs logo on there. That's a good look. Just yeah. chilling. I think that makes it complete, Justin, the, the Spurs there. I honestly think so. I Look, we've got so many pictures in that are so great. This is just one of them, but incredible stuff here. JoJo, thank you. JoJo, 1967, sent that in. Uh, let's look at some of the records this week. We compiled some of them. There's not all of them because there are so many. But uh, when we got down to nine on Monday morning, that was the eighth coldest temperature ever in San Antonio. Coldest since December 23rd, 1989. We had the two largest snowfalls since 1985. Two separate in one week. 3.7 on Monday, Sunday into Monday, and then 2.5 yesterday. Second snowiest winter all time. We're at 6.4 now inches of snow for the winter with three separate snowfalls. There was one in January that was light, but adds to it. And then the second longest stretch below freezing. We went four days, 12 hours below freezing before we briefly rose above that mark and then and dropped back down yesterday with some of that snow. It was pretty snow yesterday, but there's still some of that left on the roads, as Samuel has been telling you. And the clouds cleared out. So what is happening now is temperatures are plummeting and we're down to 20 degrees, so any moisture, any moisture left on those roads is going to freeze. It, it already has frozen, and that's why there are slick spots. Northwesterly winds at 6 miles per hour. That is producing a wind chill. 19 Bernie Stage, 18 in Pulverde, 19 Rio Medina. There are a lot of teens on this map, so it's another hard freeze this morning. 16 in Kerrville, 11 in Junction, and the wind chill values 12. That's what it feels like now here in San Antonio, and it, it does feel like negative one out in Dryden. So just incredible cold. You're probably asking yourself, when is it finally going to warm up? When are we going to get all this cold out of here? It's going to take a couple of days. It's going to be a, a slow process, but today we're up around 42, 44 for a high, and that really is going to feel pretty nice with mostly sunny skies, and winds are generally going to stay pretty light, 5 to 10 miles per hour. One issue we might run into tomorrow is some fog. Uh, future cast visibility is showing visibility is coming down some. It's not going to be widespread, but if we do get fog, it will be frozen or freezing fog because temperatures will dip below freezing again tomorrow morning, probably mid 20s. That could cause for a few more slick spots in some of the bridges and overpasses. So I mentioned that jet stream finally moves here. We had the big dip for so long, and that just brought in that really, really cold stuff. The polar vortex basically worked its way into the northern part of the country and pushed all that cold air right into Texas. That finally changes as we get into the weekend. It'll be mild both Saturday and Sunday. So the extended forecast looks like this. 56 tomorrow, some morning freezing fog. 26 to start, 45 Sunday morning. I think we get some pretty patchy, dense fog Sunday. 64, 65 Monday, probably in the 70s. On Wednesday, 72, and the seven-day forecast is quite a bit quieter than we've been seeing. But 44 is going to feel so much warmer <laughs> than yes. any day this week. A, a walk in the park, really. It's like, oh, we can handle this. W what were we writing down earlier, all the low temperatures this week? Oh, yeah, it was like uh, lottery what? numbers numbers there of like 13, 9, 12, 28, 20. <laughs> with, a, with a bonus ball of 44. <laughs> So great. Yeah. Just unlike anything we've seen, guys. Oh, it's boy. Incredible. Well, let's get this week over with for yes. sure. 523. Uh, right now, it's 20 degrees. 20 degrees. 20 degrees. Thank, 20 degrees. You, thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. Coming up, Bear County is under a winter weather emergency declaration that prohibits price gouging. We're going to tell you how to report this next on GMSA. A Bear County winter weather emergency declaration is aimed to protect from price gougers during this winter storm. The declaration states that some goods and services cannot be charged for more than the regular retail price. And among those things are, that are under the declaration are groceries, beverages, uh, toilet items and ice, as well as medicine and hotel rooms. Price gouging is illegal and the Office of the Attorney General has the authority to prosecute any business that is doing this. All right, grab a pen or jot this down in the notes on your phone to report price gouging. Call this toll-free number. It's 1-800-621-0508. 1-800-621-0508 or, or visit the Attorney General's website, texasattorneygeneral.gov. We have a full list of items that are included in the declaration right now at ksat.com.
And time now is 526, and your screen says 22, but it's actually 20 degrees right now. Let's go outside with TransGuide right now, and we still have some problems on the roads right now. Uh, to TransGuide now zooming in on this incident at 90, and General McMullen will try to get some more information from our traffic authority, Samuel King. And also ahead in the next half hour, flights delayed once again at the San Antonio International Airport. How to check the current status if you're flying out or picking someone up. Hi, good morning. It is 530. Thanks for joining us. It's finally Friday and February 19th. We have lots to talk about this morning. Begin as uh, we have most of the week. All the school districts, nearly all, closed down today. Northside, Northeast, Judson, Harlandale, and SAISD will all reopen next week and will not hold remote classes. And you can see the full list of school closures on our website at kset.com. You can also check your school's website. And many districts have been sending emails to the parents. We will also have a scrolling list of school closures at the bottom of your screen throughout GMSA. Well, the warm up begins today. We are golden by, say, Sunday, and as in golden sunshine and warming us up. Yes, uh, we'll have those morning lows above freezing. But in the meantime, it is very cold out there. We're down to 20 here in San Antonio. Another great picture coming in on KSAC Connect. That is a legit Spurs snowman there. Uh, That's scarf super cool. Yeah, basketball. I love everything about that. Great picture. Yet again, thank you so, so much. We've got, again, a ton of great pictures coming in on our KSAC Connect. That's the best way you can send in photos, by the way. We can just pop them on air, and there you go. 18 right now on Boulevard, 19 Bernie Stage, 19 Rio Medina. This is another extremely hard freeze around the area. 22 Port SA, 22 Stinson. And we got to wait until the sun comes up before we'll get a rebound and turn the corner. 12 is the wind at chill in San Antonio right now. That's what it feels like. 10 in Hondo, 16 in Kerrville. And we're still missing reports out west. Power outages, the ice did a number on some of our reporting sites. But I can't tell you that Del Rio picked up in some cases more than nine inches of snow yesterday all sorts of records being broken out there so it's just been an incredible stretch of weather it does improve it gets better 44 degrees today yes we do get below freezing again tomorrow morning but not as cold some morning freezing fog on your saturday but sun in the afternoon 56 and by sunday we're talking mid 60s for highs that sounds balmy very nice okay roadways still icy we've still got issues Samuel, uh, what's what's new on the road? Well, we were showing you, if you were with us, about uh, 15 minutes ago or so, an abandoned vehicle at the ramp at 90 General McMullen. And just after uh, there, we saw a vehicle sort of slide off here uh, into the to grassy area. So that's uh, the lights you see there. Uh, I believe this is uh, the... Uh, westbound lanes of, of 90 uh, there. Uh, so uh, again, uh, nothing's falling right now, of course, but there are still some slick spots, especially when you're coming off of these on ramps and with the temperature as cold as it is, we're not getting that melting. The conditions are actually probably a little better uh, maybe an hour or two ago, but now the temperature is really dropping. Uh, this is stuff you're going to have to watch out for across the area. We still have some closure. This is a sorry to give you a closer look at here at the, the area 90 at uh, General uh, McMullen again. Uh, some of these uh, traffic flows can be deceiving here just because uh, some there could be some icy spots there. So the good thing is we don't have much traffic, but I am noticing uh, some more people out on the roads this morning, unlike we had yesterday uh, uh, before the snowstorm. So again, just because nothing's falling from the sky doesn't mean there's not slick spots this morning. So you'll want to be careful. As I mentioned, we do have some closures, including 151 from 90 to 1604. Also have closures on 281 from 1604 to downtown 410 from 35 all the way down to uh, 90. So definitely watch out for that today. And here's a look at, at the region. Have another uh, sort of incident downtown. I believe that's the 281 uh, closure there. Also watch out at 1604. We've had some icy spots. They got a little more snow out there. Uh, so watch out for slick spots there this morning as well. Update from the city of San Antonio. They've responded to at least 1400 calls for crashes. That is very unusual uh, in a six day period now. That's since Sunday. Uh, 15 police vehicles involved in crashes, including one off Officer who was uh, unfortunately struck while helping uh, someone who was involved in a crash. That was on 281 over the weekend. Uh, Public Works Department at last check had 40 city streets closed again uh, with these cold temperatures. Some of the city streets didn't fully melt, especially if they're in the shade. So be careful and they uh, sanded 79 bridges. I have another update on some other parts of uh, South Texas coming up, guys. Thank you, Samuel. 
It has been more than 14 hours and counting for firefighters battling a fire at an apartment complex in far North Bear County. That fire continues to smolder. It has also left dozens of people without a home. Our Katrina Weber is there live on TPC Parkway just east of Bulverde Road. Now, Katrina, we understand you had a chance to talk to one of the people who live out there. And how are they handling this? Yeah, I spoke to a woman who actually lives in a building next to this one. Still, she was evacuated from her home and she hasn't been able to go back all night. Now, she talked about how this fire erupted just moments after they got an alert telling them all to turn off their water heaters. One thing, even hours later, that firefighters can't turn off seems to be this fire, this destructive fire. The fire broke out around 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon, but firefighters weren't able to do much because of water issues. They say that the hydrants here weren't working either because of the weather or water outages. About 50 people were evacuated, many of them to Johnson High School, which has been opened up as a temporary shelter for them. And as far as we know, there have not been any injuries reported just yet. Now, I had a chance to walk a little bit closer to the scene there and, and I could see all of the damage. I noticed that it wasn't just the building that is damaged. I counted about seven cars also that have been burned uh, and they are there among the rubble. Reporting live in far north Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. This morning, one of our other top stories, we're waiting to learn more about the desperate search for undocumented immigrants in far south Bear County. This all started last night at a gas station at I-37 and Loop 1604. The sheriff says a caller reported seeing about 200 people running from a tractor trailer truck parked at the gas station down there. They discovered it is a refrigerated truck. Now, deputies did catch some undocumented immigrants and say they're doing okay. The sheriff was worried about those who ran off because they're concerned about them being out in these very cold temperatures. If you see anyone, call 210-335-6000. We will continue to follow this story throughout the day right here on air and online at ksat.com. The San Antonio Food Bank is preparing to get help to those in our community who are still reeling from the historic winter weather. Count them, seven mega food distribution sites will be open starting today and last through the weekend. Our Stephen Cavazos is live at the food bank this morning with more on the relief that's on its way. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. We moved inside the warehouse here at the San Antonio Food Bank where it's a little bit warmer and with us again is uh, Chief Development Officer Michael Guerra and we were just talking about the mission this weekend. It is a big one, 100 pounds of food and water to thousands of households. How are we going to make that happen? Well, it's a it's a big effort between, you know, staff and donors who got us food, but then a lot of volunteers to support that, right? So we'll be in sites all around San Antonio, every geography, north, south, east, and west with a mega mobile distribution. One, we got to remember, we're still in a pandemic, so it's a COVID safe distribution. People can drive through. Each of them getting something really important, though, water. We know a lot of people struggling with good water. All of our distributions will have water besides, of course, food. Yeah, very important. I know you mentioned touching on volunteers. You know, for those that are watching this at home and that are able to watch this at home, what should they know if they really want to help out? Yeah, yeah we um, volunteers make this place run, right? So it's the lifeblood for us. Um, signing up on our website is the way to go. If they have a particular time that looks filled, please book ahead. We're going to need people next week and the week after as well. Um, and thanks to everybody who's already pre-booked for this. They heard the call yesterday and people are starting to show up. So it makes the Alamo City such a special place. And we do have all that information already posted on our website. That's ksat.com. You can always head over there for more information. But we'll be here live at the San Antonio Food Bank coming up here on GMSA. Mark and Steph, back to you. Thank you, Stephen. Time now is 538 and it's actually 20 degrees right now. There's a critical blood shortage in South Texas, but you can help. How to schedule an appointment with our KSAC Community Blood Drive coming up. And we are tracking all the power coming back online after days of widespread outages. We're going to see what it looks like across San Antonio. That's coming up after the break. And we're finally getting to the weekend where temperatures are finally going to warm up. But we've just got to get through these early morning hours first. We're going to check in back in with Samuel and meteorologist Justin Horn, who have been working hard all week long for you right here on GMSA. 
Welcome back to GMSA 541. If you're watching us right now, you know now that hundreds of thousands more people have power this morning in the wake of this week's extreme winter storm. CPS Energy is reporting this morning now down to only 19 active outages, affecting only 308 customers. That is unbelievable change, remarkable progress. Uh, ERCOT says the chance for rolling outages is not completely off the table because so many people are still using power across the state of Texas to heat their homes, but we should be out of the woods by the latter part of the weekend. And we are also keeping an eye on the number of flights coming in and out of San Antonio. Right now, the arrival departure board is peppered with cancellations and delays. If you're flying out or picking someone up from the airport, you can check the status of the flight on FlySanAntonio.com. 542, 20 degrees. Let's take a look outside with Transguide this morning. A lot of roads still very icy. There's uh, 281 at almost. And then we're going to go ahead and check in with Samuel King with the latest on your roadways this morning. All right, good morning. Welcome back. 545. We're at 20 degrees. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King, who has been very busy this entire week. Oh, uh, yes, the entire week and uh, then some. Also have here, uh, we're showing you uh, 90 General McMullen, a uh, person who spun out there here. Uh, so you see the abandoned vehicle there on the ramp we were telling you about about half an hour ago. And then someone spun out here into that grassy area there. Uh, police were able to come and they were able to help them get out of there. So uh, that area is now cleared. It's 90 at uh, General uh, McMullen Drive. So we'll clear that off the board. But we still have uh, some major highway closures uh, across the region. 410 uh, is closed and uh, 151 is closed as well. 1604 up here. Uh, not closed, but the you should consider the major ramps and flyovers closed, like the one here at 1604 and 10. If you were, you were with us yesterday, you saw we had a uh, jackknife tr uh, semi there. So again, these ramps uh, remain very uh, dangerous. So we'll have another full update on those closures coming up. Remember the Kerrville situation if you're heading out west on I-10. Uh, still some snow-covered roads, dangerous driving conditions. Trucks have been having trouble get out there, so uh, there have been some food and fuel shortages in that area. Justin has been talking about the uh, snow uh, out west here in Del Rio, and TxDOT reports uh, if you are someone who, who may be heading out to the Air Force Base or something in this area, just watch out. There's still a lot of snow cover on 90 and 277 out in Del Rio, so it's good that our system does uh, go all the way out there so we can let folks know what's going on with this unprecedented situation. Here's uh, one more look here at uh, Transguide. I'll show you just in this uh, view here at 35 in Alamo, another one of these elevated roadways here uh, that are shut down because you can see there, there is still snow covering the roads. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's those roads also that haven't been driven on that you're, you're still going to see that that ice. It's going to take some time. Sun's got to come up. And once that happens, we should start to see some melting. Take a look at this picture. Uh, Olaf is in Bandera, apparently. Uh, Elena sent this in. I'm telling you, these these are like artists. I consider this art. Uh, the way these uh, snowmen are looking. That's a great shot. Elena, thank you so much for that picture. And let's go and look at the 24 hour snowfall totals via our radar here. This gives you an idea of how much snow that we did see out near Del Rio. The numbers were nothing short of impressive. And uh, we're, we're thinking probably somewhere around nine to 10 inches as far as uh, what we were seeing in Del Rio yesterday. And we'll take a look at some of the numbers with the radar is outputting. These are just estimates, but eight to nine inches, I'd say in that area, right along the Rio Grande. And that swath moved right through Brackettville just north of Uvalde, where we saw about maybe six inches, and then towards Medina Lake, and then northwest side of Bear County got some good snow too. We uh, can switch radars here and take a look uh, over towards Bear County uh, of how much snow that we saw. And uh, yeah, where you see these uh, purple colors, that indicates some pretty good snow. And we'll take some estimates here six inches potentially there in northwestern Bear County. That may be a little overdone, but not too far off from the sort of the, the ground truth of, of what we were seeing. So this was an impressive snowfall yesterday. It was never just terribly heavy, but it was persistent and consistent. And that just 
started to uh, pile up. Let's go ahead and take a look at road temperatures too, because Samuel mentioned the fact that uh, those roads are still snow covered in a lot of spots. So these are road temperatures, not air temperatures, but road temperatures. And you can see they are down in the low 20s right now. So that's why there's going to be if, there, if there's any moisture on the roads, it's going to be ice. Travel is still, I'd say, discouraged or if you do have to be out, take it very, very slow. There's a look outside right now. Temperatures sitting at 20 degrees. Northwesterly winds at about six miles per hour. Another hard freeze. Temperatures are in the teens, 19 in Bernie Stage, 18 in Bulverde. So if you live, I'd say anywhere here in Bear County, it's probably going to be low 20s, teens next couple of hours. Uh, 19 Rio Medina, 17 in Hondo and uh, 25 Carrizo Springs, 29 in Kennedy. And uh, looking at the windshield, feels like 12 here in town. Jacket weather, layers, all that fun stuff that we've been dealing with all week. But here is the encouraging part. 44 degrees by this afternoon. That melts everything. We're in the thaw uh, and we'll get to thaw out. But uh, it gets even warmer over the weekend. The jet stream finally unbuckles, if you will. And that cold air gets pushed all the way up into the northeast and we're dealing with more mild conditions. Now, with that being said, Saturday morning temperatures will still be below freezing. There could be some fog, so that means we could be dealing with some freezing fog. The main concerns with that would be bridges and overpasses, maybe a little bit of moisture there, a few patches of ice. Sarah Spivey will keep you posted tomorrow morning. Good morning, SA. Uh, 56 degrees Saturday, 64 Sunday. We could see some more patchy fog Sunday morning. And then more average temperatures as uh, we get into next week some 70s on the board guys that sounds nice very nice more like san antonio more like san antonio yes. <laughs> thank you justin 550 about 20 degrees and give blood and save lives we're going to have the information on our case at community blood drive coming up after the break and as we go to break we want to wish a very happy birthday to gmsa producer hardy meredith a fellow SFA lumberjack, very happy birthday <laughs> to you today. We're glad you are off. You have worked very hard yes. this week, Hardy. Yes, you have. Happy birthday, Hardy. Happy Enjoy. Birthday. For more than a century, Mount Zion First Baptist Church has served the San Antonio community and opened its doors to those in need. The church was founded back in 1871 uh, by five uh, former slaves and a white minister. The first Mount Zion Church was a modest one-room building located on Santo Street. The church was there for a long time until 1924 uh, when they marched from Santo Street to this current location and they built this church. Decades later, the Reverend Claude Black Jr. became pastor and led the church to national prominence in the National Baptist Convention. And so much so that uh, Reverend Black became a member of the city council and was uh, one of the first African American, well, he was the first African American uh, mayor pro tem to serve in the city. Mount Zion was a beacon of faith in the area, but in 1974, an arsonist set the church on fire. Everything was destroyed. At, except for one Bible. One Bible survived and we have it encased downstairs. And the church was rebuilt within a year. The people said, we will not let uh, racist and prejudiced people uh, take our joy. Welcome back about five till University Health rescheduled the upcoming KSAC Community Blood Drive due to this week's winter weather. It was scheduled to take place uh, over the last couple days, but it will instead take place March 1st and 2nd, blood supplies across South Texas are still critically low. University Health encouraging everyone who can donate to do so during the rescheduled drive. That will happen at the Whitty Museum. To find out how you can register, go to ksaccommunity.com. Ahead on GMSA, the power crisis amid the winter weather has left many of us with a lot of unanswered questions. A lot of folks from the Texas Tribune is going to join us live to put this all into context. And we're also going to talk more about the situation facing Senator Ted Cruz, who has now returned from Cancun, Mexico. Right now looking at TransSky. More from Samuel King coming up. CPS Energy has restored power to tens of thousands of customers, but some still remain without it and we are not out of the woods yet with the cold weather. Most school districts plan to welcome students back on Monday. You can see the full list of closures on ksat.com. You can also reach out to your particular district, check their website. We also have a scrolling list of closures at the bottom of your screen here on GMSA. 
and taking a look out with live cam this morning. I see snow still out there, but yeah, we are waiting for that big thaw out right now. We are in the 20s, but we are expected to go up to the 40s, which seems like a piece of cake right now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Yeah, from the big chill to a big thaw is about to take place. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It's February 19th. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, what an incredible week. Uh, you know, snow twice and, you know, historic temperatures, just a lot of things going on. So we are glad to be to Friday today. Let's talk to Justin now about how much of a warm up and when I guess the window here is we've got uh, another four or five hours and then we sort of get come out of the woods a little bit. You're exactly right. Mid morning. I think we jump above freezing that will melt just about everything we have out there, but it's still a little dicey right now because there's still some leftover moisture. Temperatures are bitter cold again this morning. We're down to 21 here in San Antonio. Again, we've got so many great pictures. We've shown quite a few this morning, but this is just another one on our case. I connect. I can relate to this snowman. Nice and tall. Uh, four layers there. You probably had to use a lot to get to the top layer, but great shot. Uh, another good snowman on our case at connect and we'll show a few more pictures as we get throughout the course of the morning. So we have warmed up a degree. We are at 20 last hour, 21 now 19 at Randolph 19 Bernie stage 18 in Rio Medina. It is a hard freeze and that is keeping everything icy out there. Any sort of moisture again that is left over on the roads is turned to ice. Now 14 Kerrville 25 Carrizo Springs. It will take some time for us to get out of this deep freeze, but we will this afternoon. Temperature should make it into the 40s. What little wind we do have. There is some wind chill out there, but uh, it's not too, too bad. Five, the current wind chill there in Honda uh, forecast uh, 37 noon time up to 42, 44. I think eventually for a high today, northwesterly winds five to 10 miles per hour. There will be a little bit more in the way of freezing temperatures tomorrow. We'll talk about that here in, in just a little bit tomorrow morning. Uh, let's look at the roads now with uh, Samuel King. Any more issues out there? Uh, Justin, good morning. We still have a we have a blockage here. Well, we did have a blockage here. You see an emergency vehicle in the foreground. This is a 90 at a couple. So we still have uh, some slick spots out there denoted here uh, on the, the indicator here and a lot of uh, highway closures uh, in the area that includes uh, 151 out here between 90 and uh, 1604 410 from 90 all the way to 35 on the northeast side. The city of San Antonio has responded to at least 1400 calls uh, for crashes uh, over the past few days. 15 police vehicles involved in crashes uh, with 40 city streets closed, 79 bridges uh, sanded. And here again, this is at 90 at a couple's uh, slick spots. And we had an accident earlier we told you about on General McMullen and Commerce. We understand a woman lost control on an icy bridge. So once again, even though nothing is falling from the sky, we do have some slick spots, uh, particularly on the ramps, overpasses, bridges, and some city streets. So take it easy out there. We'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. A fire in an apartment complex in far north Bear County refuses to die. Firefighters have been battling it since yesterday afternoon, and this morning it continues to smolder. Our Kachina Weber is there with a live report on TPC Parkway just east of Olverde Road. And Katrina, has there been any update to the number of units that have been burned? Well, as a matter of fact, I just flagged down one of the fire department supervisors. He told me that their count is about 130 units here have burned or uh, have damage. Uh, it's not clear if they're all in just this one building. Uh, he said between 50 and 60 people have been evacuated from this apartment complex. And those are people, many of them, who now have nothing to return to. A viewer captured this video as part of the building came crashing down late last night. The fire here at the Cortland View at TPC Apartments had been burning since around 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Firefighters at times had to let it just burn. That's because they've had issues getting water here. They, uh, the firefighters told me that the problem has been uh, the, the water outages. They've affected the hydrants here, and so they've had to bring in water on trucks. Now, as far as we know, there were no injuries reported. But many of the people evacuated here now uh, are at Johnson High School, which is acting as a temporary shelter for them. Um, as I observed, uh, the damage goes beyond just this building. I was walking around there earlier and I counted at least seven burned cars there among the rubble. Reporting live in far north Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
Trina, thank you. San Antonio Food Bank is ready to respond and offer relief in the wake of this historic winter weather. The nonprofit hopes to provide 100 pounds of food and water to thousands of households in our community over the next couple of days. Our Stephen Cavazos is live out there this morning as efforts ramp up. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark. Well, we are here at the warehouse of the San Antonio Food Bank, and with me again is Michael Guetta, Chief Development Officer with the Food Bank, and we were just chit-chatting a little while ago before we came up talking about how the food bank had to be sidelined during this critical time because you guys lost power and distribution wasn't what it normally was. Yeah, you know, it's, it's tough for the group that kind of runs to the fire. We're going to run into the disaster to be uh, largely on the sideline for safety reasons. It was really tough for so much of our team. Uh, we cook a lot of meals out of Haven for Hope, out of the shelter, homeless shelter downtown, and those meals fed that shelter and a lot of other shelters. But we couldn't get groceries around because it wasn't safe for us to go out or to bring families out. I think we don't think about that. that the food economy is very mobile. We all need to get in our cars or someplace to go to a grocery store to get a meal. It's the same for the food bank. But, you know, what the great thing is you guys are ramping up those efforts today. And, you know, despite being uh, sidelined over the last few days, you guys have been preparing for this mega food distribution that's going to be happening again a little bit later this morning and throughout the weekend. How did that preparation go into play? Yeah, you know, the, the executive team and all the operations team have been planning for days, just really looking at the weather. When could we ramp up and how big could we go? Where could we go? So finding facilities around San Antonio that would open to us, open safely um, on all quadrants uh, was what we've been planning for. And so we'll be at the food bank all weekend. We're going to be this morning over at Northside Stadium this afternoon at Rackspace Technologies. We'll be out north tomorrow at River City Church. And we'll be tomorrow south down at Harlandale. So we're really trying to make it easy for people from a geography point of view. Very good. And you know, we have all that information already posted on our website at ksat.com. And also, if you want to volunteer, there's a link there that'll get you some more information. But we'll be live here coming up in the next half hour of GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Well, the sun is on its way, and many of us here in Texas are excited to say the least. Yes, we are. But one of those Texans, our own David Sears, who is up in Comal County. Good morning, David. Good morning. How y'all doing? <laughs> We're good. Hey. How are things up there near Canyon Lake? It's eight. Cold. Oh, it's 18 degrees up here at Canyon Lake this morning. Uh, all the uh, beautiful snow has turned to ice. Uh oh, I gotta take my glove off again. Man, this poor hand is frozen. Look at there. It's all crystally, sparkly, very nice. Looks like diamonds in the snow. And if it melted, it wouldn't be way too soon either. Now, you remember earlier this week, I showed you this tree. I, I don't know, I'm fascinated by this. This tree limb was way down here the other day because it was full of ice so the good news is a lot of the uh, snow and ice have melted off these trees so they can like uh, recuperate now there's still some snow in the trees I think your feet is frozen like the tree oh there oh, okay, you okay now you're back oh. go ahead David <laughs> okay I'll stop moving then so that's the tree <laughs> I guess we'll just sit here and look at this tree <laughs> since the thing is frozen, well, it's frozen like uh, like the rest of us right this has been one heck of a week out here in Comal County I can tell you that let me, let me see is it still frozen there's the, uh, there's the driveway and another tree. You can see the uh, light bouncing off the, off the ice. I walked across there a while ago and I didn't take but about three steps and went, that's good. And I came back because uh, I don't know, for people that are gonna get out this morning, you gotta remember that there's a layer of snow but it's over ice. So just because it looks like you can step in it and be okay, you can easily fall and, uh, and bust something. What's your pow uh, so power and very, water very situation, careful. David? Uh, lots of power. Everything's good there. No water still. Oh, no. So we're, uh, we uh, got a note from Canyon Lake Water yesterday that they were somewhere in our neighborhood yesterday. So we're hoping today to uh, actually see some water. That would be kind of fun. So that It's been kind of tough because we had to borrow some water from... Uh, my wife's business partner, and it was a boil water notice, and so we're having to boil water for taking down to the horses. So that's been uh, that's been an experience. This whole thing has been an experience. I don't think there is a Texan across this state that has done something that they've never done before, had to experience something that they've never experienced before, unless they spent a lot of years up north. I did as a kid, but I never experienced anything like this. So we're all uh, we're all trying to get through it and man
What's the temperature supposed to be today? Like in the 40s? Yeah, yeah like mid 40s. 40s. I know, right? <laughs> yes. Well, you'll be able to take all those layers off on. by I, Saturday I, you know and what? Sunday. I hope it's been. It, you know, when you, when you forget all the all the crazy stuff and all the bad stuff that's happened, you look around and you go, "This is kind of cool." The it pool's is. over. Let's go. Yeah. It is. But we're glad Bring you have power. Heat. We're glad. Yes. We're glad everything's okay. Yeah. I'm typical February though, right? From fleece to flip flops, David Sears. Yeah, next week we'll be out here in shorts and t-shirts. I'll go live next week and show you how to do it. All right. Well, maybe maybe we That'll can get, safely get you back at work next week. I hope so. <laughs> we hope you, so, you too. You know, I love coming into the station and working in there. So you know I love that. So, right. Yeah, no. Well, we for the sake of your wife, we, we'll try to get you back at work starting next week, okay? Oh, by the way, she was my assistant all week helping me out with stuff, and this morning she goes, you got it. You're on your own. You're on your own. You're in bed. Oh, yeah. Come on. She goes, no, we're done. Well, You're done. Thank you to your wife as well, not David. That great. Yep. David Sears live yeah, in Comal County this lot, morning. So Thank you, David. Have a good weekend. Right now it is 609, 21 degrees. And many of us may be angry or frustrated with the state's response to the power crisis this past week. After the break, Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune will join us to help break it all down. Outside with live cam waiting for that sun to come up, warm us up and, and start to bake a little bit later on this weekend. More with Samuel and Justin coming up. 613, frustrated, angry, confused. These are just some of the feelings KSAT viewers have shared with us about the power crisis this week. And with each passing day, more people are demanding answers from state officials to help them understand what happened and where we go from here. To help put things into context, Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune actually joins us live this morning. Alana, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Let's start with U.S. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. He spoke with reporters last night in Houston and said his trip to Cancun was a mistake in hindsight. For folks that were offline or off grid, give us a quick recap, please. Sure. Well, uh, photos began surfacing Wednesday of Cruz with his family at an airport uh, said to be heading to Mexico. And uh, sure enough, that was the case. By Thursday, we and others were able to confirm that. Uh, he flew back. Uh, seemed to be uh, the intention to fly back this weekend, but given the uproar that started Wednesday evening, uh, he did fly back yesterday, said, you know, his daughters uh, asked him after being cold in their Houston home for two days this week because of a loss of power, uh, you know, if they could get away because they also didn't have school. School had been canceled for the week. He said in hindsight, uh, you know, he, so he appeased them, but in hindsight, he's he knows it was the wrong decision. He said he planned to work there, uh, do Zoom meetings, check in with officials. But of course, the optics were not great considering how many uh, parents like him uh, have children that are sick and tired of being in the cold from power outages. So he, you know, offered his apologies, but of course, uh, scathing blowback from from Democrats and others in response to his travels. Follow up question there, Alana. Cruz was already facing calls to resign. We've seen the billboards here in San Antonio. As far as this Cancun thing, what kind of memory do you think voters will have if Cruz runs again years from now? You know, I always talk about being in this for covering this for several years. I call it voter amnesia. Uh, you know, I mean, 2022, 2024 are lifetimes away in the politics world. We as voters are, are busy and have other things to worry about. And so I find that people often forget or, but I mean, this is a circumstance where being in the cold uh, alone without, you know, uh, heat or, or, or water and with your children might stick with people a little more. But again, the next election for Cruz isn't till 2024 at the earliest. And so again, that's a lifetime away. Thanks, Alana. And the medical system here is taxed between the pandemic, water shortages, and power outages. What is in store across the state? Yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly it. It's kind of a, you know, emergency on top of the pandemic. And you've seen, you know, people, women pregnant, not being able to make it to birthing centers, delivering it in other places, uh, you know, medical personnel sleeping in the hospital because, you know, for fear they couldn't get back for their shift to, to tend to people in need. Uh, 
hospital right by us uh, had to evacuate 30 patients uh, because of a lack of water. And that's something, again, we started to experience here in my home uh, Wednesday. So just a whole confluence of things uh, affecting already a taxed system after fighting the pandemic for months on end. We know Governor Abbott spoke with President Joe Biden. What do we know about that conversation, Alana? Yeah, I mean, you know, he, uh, the president seems to have been uh, receptive, uh, you know, to the governor's request for emergency declaration, allowing FEMA to come in uh, and help with people in need who don't have a warm shelter in these cold temperatures. Uh, you know, the, the governor speaking yesterday saying uh, there's still a lot of unanswered questions, but right now they're focused on getting people back online. Uh, as you know, and I'm sure you've reported that the governor uh, declared the reform of the power grid system uh, an emergency item, which means lawmakers that are currently in session can take up any uh, issues related to that before the 60 day mark uh, in the session. We're about, you know, 30 plus days in. So, you know, they're, they're trying to work, but there's a lot of finger pointing, uh, you know, a lot of things to be addressed at once. And Alana, grid operators said we were seconds and minutes away from month long blackouts. So it seems the situation could have been much worse. Yeah, I mean, they said when they announced the, the rolling blackouts that they intended for Monday, uh, they started to see huge parts of the grid go offline because a lot of the equipment, both the pipes and the equipment that gets the energy to the different operators, started to freeze. And so they said if they didn't keep some of those people, a lot of those people, offline longer, it could have put a, such a stress on the grid that, yes, it, we could have been in a months-long blackout. Uh, it's alarming. Again, another thing that the legislature is looking at uh, to see exactly how to you know, prevent a future crisis like this. Because, yes, this is a, a once in a 120 year cold snap, but, uh, you know, people are living in it right now. Well, lots of questions remain to be answered. We know you guys there at the Trib and we here at KSAT continue to ask questions in the days, weeks and months to come. Uh, I understand you're still without water, but you do have power there, Alana, there in Austin. We do. We have not lost it. And with two little ones, uh, that's that's a comfort. We're having plenty of water reserves, but, you know, finding snow for, for flushing and for uh, dishes, uh, it's been interesting. Well, Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune, thank you for joining us live today. Our best to you and your family as we go into this weekend and we start to finally yes, warm, warm up, up a little bit. <laughs> thank you, Alana. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alana. Time to check traffic. Let's go to Samuel at 619. Uh, good morning, guys. Stuff uh, getting a little uh, more tricky and treacherous on the roads. We've been showing you this view here at 90 in General McMullen. Uh, this ramp uh, was just blocked off, but you see some uh, vehicles there trying to uh, take it easy. Uh, this is just an example. Now that the temperatures are uh, in the low 20s, uh, what this can do to the roads uh, pretty quickly here. So uh, watch out for that. Not too far away from there, we had a crash earlier this morning. Woman apparently slipped on an icy bridge as she was approaching Commerce, went off and rolled over just to show you how serious this can be. Also getting some reports of a serious uh, crash here at 35 and Somerset uh, on the southwest side. So we'll try to get some more information on that, but we understand there are a lot of units on the scene here. So again, something uh, to watch out for. We still have some highway closures and especially uh, 410 from 35 all the way to 90. Again, the flyover ramps particularly dangerous uh, right now. And one more check here before we toss to Justin. Uh, dangerous driving still conditions still in Kerrville. Truck and uh, deliveries have been delayed because of the, the icy roads and the snowy roads. So food and fuel, they had some shortages. Hopefully that situation gets addressed today, Justin. And the good news is we're going to warm up later on. You're exactly right. We will get the chance to thaw today. And on a less serious note, let's take another look at a picture in our case at Connect. Uh, listen, you got to enjoy it sometimes. We get snowfall here in San Antonio. This is from Von Army relaxing. You didn't need a refrigerator to keep the uh, the beer cold. That's uh, that's awesome. Thank you for the picture. Uh, that's a good one coming out of Von Army. Uh, let's take a look at some of the records we set this week. Uh, we compiled kind of a crude list here, but uh, eighth coldest temperature on record when we got down to nine degrees. Coldest since December 23rd, 1989. We had the two largest snowfalls since 1985 in the same week. 3.7 inches, 2.5 yesterday. Second snowiest winter all time. We're now at 6.4 inches of snow for this season and the second longest stretch below freezing. We went four days and 12 hours, came up just 90 minutes short of the longest stretch 
which was set back in 1951. Incredible stuff. Yesterday's snowfall, it piled up. Uh, we had some big numbers out near Del Rio, and the uh, purple color you see there represents somewhere around eight to nine inches in some cases. Uh, we had some reports close to that uh, out near Del Rio of uh, eight, eight to nine or so, so it doesn't look like it's popping up there, but that would be a huge total, it would be record setting for uh, those out in Del Rio. Uh, we had some good numbers here around San Antonio as well. Uh, with some estimated six inch totals there in northwestern Bear County, but for the most part, it was two to four inches here in town. As we look at the time lapse, we had cloud cover earlier. That is gone. And so with clear skies, still some snow on the ground. Temperatures are plummeting this morning. 21 degrees at the airport. It was at 20 last hour. Calm winds, so this is a good setup for these temperatures to really fall. 19 Bernie Stage, 18 in Bulverde, 19 Randolph, 21 Stinson, and you're sitting in 13 right now in Honda. Bigger picture, 11 in Junction. There are some single digits as you go out west, 8 right now in Dryden. Forecast for today does take us above freezing. I think by mid morning, we're up above that 32 degree mark. 37 noontime, 42. Uh, by 2 o'clock, and we'll reach high somewhere around 44. So they'll do a lot to sort of thaw us out. One thing we do have to talk about, though, is tomorrow morning. Fog may develop. Temperatures will be below freezing, and we'll have the potential for a little bit of freezing fog. This model shows some of that. Doesn't look to be too widespread, but we have to mention it because sometimes freezing fog can deposit a little bit of moisture on some of the bridges and overpasses. They can become slick, and we're dealing with issues yet again. So just a heads up there. Uh, here's the setup. That cold air that's been over Texas moves away. We get into more of a mild pattern, something we would expect uh, here in South Texas with temperatures in the 60s, average numbers as we get into next week, especially and that cold air goes back to the north. So here's our extended forecast. Uh, some morning freezing fog tomorrow, 56. We start off at 26 tomorrow morning, but above freezing for overnight lows starting Sunday. And 64 on Sunday, 65 Monday, we may get some more clouds, maybe a slight chance for shower Thursday, but we're back in the 70s by Wednesday. What a change after a record setting week. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Make fitness routine with Pure Protein. High protein, low sugar. Tastes great. High protein, low sugar. So good. High protein, low sugar. Mmm, birthday cake. Try Pure Protein shakes with vitamins and minerals for immune support. Age before beauty? Why not both? Visibly diminish wrinkled skin in just two days. New Quick Corrector Lotion, only from Gold Bond. Champion your skin. At Panera, when we make a pizza, we don't just make a pizza. We use fresh, clean ingredients to make a masterpiece. Order our new pepperoni and four cheese flatbread pizzas for delivery or pickup today. Panera. Pain hits fast. So get relief fast. Only Tylenol Rapid Release Gels have laser drilled holes. They release medicine fast for fast pain relief. Tylenol Rapid Release Gels. Warming centers will continue to stay open today for whoever needs a warm place to stay. Let's take a look at some of those that will open in San Antonio and the surrounding area. The Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center, Bear County Fire Marshal's Office, Cross Point Church, and several school gyms. Seniors and families with children are top priority. Also very important to remember, bring a face mask with you. Definitely important. And time now is 627. And are we at 20 degrees, Justin? 21, that's right. An apartment complex collapses after a huge fire on San Antonio's far north side this morning. More than 50 people are in temporary housing and the fire at last check was still smoldering. We'll get an update from our Katrina Weber. And the San Antonio Food Bank will be open for business today and they are expected to ramp up their operations after this winter weather. You can see where you can get help or volunteer in our next half hour of GMSA. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is February 19th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And Justin has been showing us wonderful pictures of snow people all morning long, and he has one right now. Yes, uh, this is this is a cool uh, photo here, and I, I want to read the caption. 
Uh, and Antonio, this is Antonio here, made a snowman surprise for her stepdaughter Casey. She has Down syndrome in multi disabilities, so she can't go outside and enjoy the snow. He made her one of her favorite Star Wars characters when she went to bed so she could see uh, BB. I believe that's the name BB of the Star Wars BB character. BB yeah, yeah. What is it? BB 8. BB 8. I should know that, but I don't. <laughs> um, I do now, right? So she gets, I do now. <laughs> so she could see it out the window. Great gesture there, and uh, good job. I mean, these, uh, these snowmen, these snow people, uh, as Steph put it, that, would, that we've been seeing are just incredible. But we love that picture. Thank you so much for our uh, KSAC Connect pictures that you've been sending in. Current temperatures across the state. We're in the deep freeze again. Five in Abilene, 10 in Lubbock, eight in Amarillo, 17 in Dallas, 28 in Houston. And we've been showing this map. It is important because remember, we're all in the same power grid here. And one of the reasons that we had some power issues is because a whole state was in the deep freeze. We're still there, but it's going to improve dramatically today. And it's not only us, but much of Texas starts to thaw out and warm above freezing. Still at the moment, though, a hard freeze out there. 19 Bernie stage, 21 at the airport, 20 Castroville, 13 at Hondo, 15 Las Maples. And the forecast next couple days, 44 today, but we're up to 56 Saturday. That's huge. Some morning freezing fog will be possible tomorrow, which should be brief. And then 64 Sunday with uh, some more dense fog, but overnight lows even jump up above freezing. Okay, there is ice out there. Temperatures are, are bitterly cold, so we, we got to watch the roadways carefully this morning if you're going to be out traveling. Samuel's been all over it, as you have been all week. Right. <laughs> uh, what's the situation now? Yeah, this is 90 General McMullen, uh, Justin. You can still uh, see a bit of uh, I, uh, snow cover from the road, so this is going to be slick, especially with the temperatures uh, like they are. So if you want to Hold tight uh, just for a little bit here, like we're telling you in some of the other mornings, temperature warms, uh, then uh, road conditions will improve very quickly. But right now we have some tricky spots like here at 90 General McMullen. Also have a major crash here, 35 uh, at uh, Somerset Road here. Uh, so this is I-35 at Somerset Road uh, on the uh, southwest side there. And they're going to be closing off uh, the highway here to address uh, some of the issues here with this crash. So travels, traffic's going to go have to go be on the frontage roads here. Uh, so again, 35 on the southwest side. We'll continue to gather some more information about that. Still have a number of highway closures uh, across the area, including 281 from 1604 to downtown. 410 from 35 to 90 and uh, as well as uh, there's uh, one more 151 excuse me uh, so many so much stuff going on this week uh, that's uh, something we have to do here and uh, zooming in here we had a crash earlier today a woman was injured sliding on an icy bridge on a side street so this is something that's important here uh, the city has reported uh, several streets uh, reported as closed they've been sanding bridges uh, but again some of the city streets could be dangerous so watch out for that this morning we'll have another update guys coming up Firefighters waiting for daylight to get a better look at the smoldering remnants of an apartment building in far north Bear, Co Bear County. The fires destroyed more than 100 units at this complex off TPC Parkway that is east of 281 outside Loop 1604. Our Katrina Weber has been reporting live from there all morning long. Katrina, good morning. You mentioned there were also some automobiles that were caught in it too. Well, that is right. At least one whole building, and I counted about seven cars back there that have been destroyed by this fire. Still, this fire won't die. As this viewer video shows, part of the building collapsed late last night. The fire has been burning since about 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Firefighters have had a hard time with it. They told me that the hydrants here are dry due to all the water outages we've been experiencing. So they've had to bring in water on trucks. It's been a helpless feeling for both them as well as the people who live here. Oh, it's been horrible. I'm, I'm in building seven right next door to the building six that's, that burned down. And they just evacuated us earlier to leave the building. And but we stood out here watching it burn. And that woman was actually one of about 50 to 60 people who were escorted out of here for their own safety. The woman says she spent part of the night in her car, even though there's a temporary shelter set up at Johnson High School. And as I mentioned earlier, some people have lost their cars as well as their homes due to this fire. The firefighters told me that they plan to have the fire marshal's office come in to investigate this. But of course, that will be after this fire is out. Some people who live here told us that 
they, this fire erupted moments after they got an alert telling them to turn off, off their water heaters. So that is one area that investigators will be looking at uh, again, though later down the line once this fire is out. Reporting live in far north Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. The San Antonio Food Bank is preparing for seven mega mobile food distributions over the next few days. The nonprofit hopes to get food and water to thousands of households impacted by the freezing weather. Our Stephen Cavazos has been live at the food bank all morning long and has more on their effort to provide relief. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Stephanie. That's right. It's a huge undertaking for the San Antonio Food Bank, which is why volunteers are so important. With us again, one last time is Mark Yetta, the chief development officer here with the nonprofit. You know, one of the important things as we were talking is volunteers and how they make this place run. How important are they to you guys? But, I mean, volunteers are the lifeblood, you know, and we have this philosophy that service just heals the world, right? It makes us better. It's part of who we are. And so just giving our community the opportunity to serve is one of the most important things we can do. People think about the food bank serving those in need, but we also feel like we serve those who have resources, right, and just want to give. So just to try and be that bridge, but it's the volunteers who are going to make our distributions today really happen. And we know that that is going to be, uh, again, something that is going to be bringing the community together and helping out those in need. And that's something that you guys have you've seen over the last few days in, term, in these very difficult times. What does that mean to you when you see the community coming together to help people, especially during a time like this? Uh, this community is an inspiration, um, you know, to, to watch what, how it's responded during natural disasters, hurricanes, um, and then even now, whether it's small acts of kindness that we're seeing in neighbors, um, or the, when we put out a call for volunteers yesterday to see 500 people within just a couple hours fill those slots just as quickly as they could. It's the greatest city in the nation, I believe, and it's because of our just that commitment to service and the ethic of being kind to each other. Well, we love that message. And of course, volunteers make the huge, the big difference here. And of course, if you want to volunteer, you can head over to our website. That's at ksat.com. We have a list of the seven distribution sites posted on there again as well. But the first will be happening here at the food bank later this morning, starting at 10 and up until four this afternoon. But again, head over to our website at ksat.com for more information. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. First time we've seen him without a hood on in about four or five days. Yes. We've been getting a lot of questions about that boil water notice here in San Antonio. Like, what does it mean and how long will it last? Our Erica Hernandez is joining us live from her home with some of those answers. Good morning, Erica. Hey guys, good morning. Well, that voluntary boil water notice was issued on Wednesday and we got many of your questions about it answered directly by SAWS. Now, here are some of those answers. First, what does a voluntary boil water recommendation mean? SAW says that TCEQ is not requiring SAWS to issue an official boil water notice because it's not certain that there are confirmed contaminants in the water. There is no indication that happened, but SAW says once the pressure is back up, they will test everything to make sure. But until then, they can't say it's 100% safe. For those who haven't lost any water pressure this week, they shouldn't have any issue with the safety of their drinking water. Another important question we got was how long do I need to boil water and what about using water for other things? Water for drinking should be boiled and cooled prior to use. The water should be brought to a vigorous ro rolling boil and then boiled for two minutes. The boiled water should be used for preparing and cooking food, washing all fruits and vegetables, when preparing drinks like coffee or tea, feeding babies, washing dishes, brushing teeth, and drinking water for your pets. Be careful when babies not to swallow any water and also most kitchen and other household water filters typically do not remove bacteria or viruses. One more question I do want to answer is how long this will last. Right now, SAW says it can take a few days since they have to go and test each of the 200 water pump stations and will notify certain areas when their water is safe as, they t as that testing is being done. Now, there are other questions in this article that are answered by SAWS. We have this up on ksat.com. And I also want to mention that yesterday, SAWS did announce that they will have a bill relief program to help all customers. We also want to remind you that KSAT will be hosting a Q&A with Robert Fuente, the CEO of SAWS, tonight at 6.30. You can watch it on air on ksat.com or on the KSAT TV app. Mark, Steph. All right, Erica, thank you for that live report. Time now is 641 and 21 degrees for now. Hey, do you remember earlier this week when we had about 310,000 people without power? Look at this. Right now, you are looking at the latest refreshed CPS Energy outage map. 21 outages affecting only 310 customers.
and let's take a look at your roadways this morning. There's 410 and Starcrest, and in some of those camera shots, you can still see, you know, snow off to the side, but definitely a lot of icy roadways, very dangerous. We're gonna check in with Samuel King to check our roadways throughout the San Antonio area. Well, most people in San Antonio have power again this morning. But the Hill Country still dealing with the aftermath of the winter storm. And our David Sears joins us from Comal County Ooh. this morning. What's the latest up there, David? Let me tell you. Yeah, let me tell you guys, it's been an experience. It's been something that uh, never lived through it and never hope to live through it again. Three observations for you as we as we wrap up this Friday morning and okay. hopefully this thing will be over this weekend. Number one, I've never been so cold and never thought I would ever be so cold inside a home. When our electricity went off on Sunday night, early Monday morning, it stayed off for a long period of time. And I, I understand what other people are going through because we got up one morning and it was about 45, 46 degrees in the house. And I've never dreamed that I would ever be that cold inside a home. So for all those folks that have had to deal with that, my heart goes out to you, especially those folks, the elderly ones that had to deal with it, and especially those that have kids, little babies. Man, my heart goes out to you guys because I've been there and I know what, what that was like at least for a little bit. Here's my second observation. I have never scared at a water faucet for so long, hoping for a drop of water. Come on, come on, come on, just one drop, just, just, just a drop. Still waiting, by Aww. the way, but okay. I know Canyon Lake but, Water is out here doing what they can. But you have here's power. my third observation. Okay. okay, three, three. I have power, and we're okay. good. My third observation is I have never worn long johns this many days in a row in my entire life. Thank God I had more than one pair. <laughs> That's all I got for you. You're winning. Was now, I, have a, I have a lot more observations, but we'll hold those, we'll okay. hold those for later. Let me end right here. I know it's going to freeze up a little bit, but let me end with this shot right there. Aww. There is and hope the sun is up. on the horizon. That's Do you see that? beautiful. Yes. Yep. Thank you, David. That's awesome. David Sears. So there you go. David Sears live from Comal County. Thank you, David. And uh, we hope you guys warm up like everybody else this weekend. Yes. Continue to be safe. Samuel King is standing by with an update on our traffic. Uh, another update here. If you're watching the 6 o'clock news yesterday, you might have seen Adam Kasky had to deal with the breakage of my switcher over here. But I can report that our lovely engineers here have fixed it. It's been quite a week for everybody, both on the air and behind the scenes. And I'm happy to have helped some people get through uh, this week. We appreciate that. Uh, we still have some highway closures. This is 410 at uh, Babcock, uh, the, only the frontage lanes. David mentioned the sun on the horizon. This is the skyline. You see some traffic moving in I-10, but remember the flyovers here, especially the ramp, fine silver curve, remain closed. Uh, we still have a situation here on the southwest side, uh, Somerset Road, uh, just north of uh, 410. Uh, we have uh, some issues there, so watch out for that. Again, looking at the region, 151 uh, is closed here, all as well as 2. 81 and uh, we had this crash earlier today here at uh, Joe McMullen and West Commerce icy roads on the side streets and uh, looking out here at the hill country again if you are planning a trip west you might want to hang out a little bit because if we've had some truck delivery issues because of the snowy issues some fuel scarcity in the Kerrville area so something to watch out for but Justin again things are looking brighter yeah I love that shot from David with the sun coming up 20 minutes, 20 minutes, the sun is up. We start to turn the corner. We get these temperatures going in the right direction. Well, what a stretch it has been. Take a look at this picture in our case at Connect. This is from Virginia. That is an igloo. I would imagine that would take several hours to put together. I'm just saying, they said they spent the day doing it. That, uh, that's incredible. Enough snow for that. Between Monday's snowfall and yesterday's snowfall, it added up over six inches here in San Antonio. If you were out in Del Rio yesterday, wow. Most you've ever seen all time. We had nine to even 11 inches reported out near Del Rio. Our radar estimating about eight inches, but I'm sure there were some totals a little bit higher than that around the city of Del Rio and to the north near Lake Amistad. Uh, as you go uh, east, about six inches there, Brackettville, north of Uvalde, and then back over towards San Antonio. We did have some reports of about six inches up there around Medina Lake and northwestern parts of Bear County, and then it sort of falls off a little bit as you get into town, four inches, uh, two inches down here. So about two to four.
across the city. Here's sort of an interesting thing. Uh, we had the heavier snow on the northwest side of town. Literally a, a distance of 10 miles, we went from an estimate of six inches there around Gray Forest and Holotus to about uh, three inches in Stone Oak. So a uh, difference of 10 miles, difference of three inches. That's kind of how snow forecasting goes, and the, those bands can set up and make a big difference. Nonetheless, it was snowy everywhere. It was, it was pretty to see, but I think we're all kind of ready for things to warm up. There's the site outside, and it's, it's really uh, fascinating to see these bridges because you can see where the ice is right there, and then when you get back down into the surface streets, it's uh, probably just wet, but there's going to be some slick spots there too. You got to take it slow. Bridges and overpasses will be the last to sort of warm up and clear out. 21 degrees right now at the airport, calm winds. Humidity is at 78%. Temperature wise, 17 in Bandera, 13 in Kerrville. We're at 13 in Hondo, 19 in Randolph. So it is another hard freeze this morning. 23 degrees, so springs, everybody is below freezing, even down to Corpus. We'll be up around 44 degrees today. That will sufficiently thaw us out. That being said, as we go into tonight, we will drop back down below freezing. We could see some fog, so that means some freezing fog tomorrow morning should last for very long, but it may cause a few issues on some of the overpasses yet again. The pattern here changes. The jet stream was dipped way to the south. That finally changes. We're back into the mild air this weekend. I think you're going to like the weekend forecast and the next week's forecast too. We mentioned the possibility of a little bit of freezing fog Saturday morning and then some patchy, dense fog on Sunday, 64, and the next week looking really good. Upper 60s on Tuesday, up to close to 70 on Wednesday. We'll be right back. Six, uh, 55, just <laughs> about here on a Friday morning, and we're all glad to uh, see Friday. Some closures remain. This is 410. Uh, the main lanes closed, traffic getting by on the frontage roads. Uh, let's take a look here. 281 at Divine, still pretty slick and dangerous, so watch out for that. Also have delays building here on the southwest side, northwest 35 at Somerset Road. A major crash this afternoon, so watch out for or this morning. Oh boy, <laughs> watch out for that. Still uh, closures too on 151, 281, and 410, Justin. Thank you, Samuel. We just got an update on that temperature down to 19 here in San Antonio, 19 at Randolph. So it is bitterly cold again this morning. Here's the bit of good news. The sun is on its way up. We'll see these numbers turn a corner and it does warm up sufficiently this afternoon to melt a lot of that snow and ice up to 44. I think for a high with mostly sunny skies. And in fact, by mid morning, we should be rising above freezing. The weekend looks good other than maybe a little bit of freezing fog. On Saturday morning, 60s, Sunday, 60s and 70s next week, guys. All right, as we wrap up the morning show on this Friday, we want to thank everybody behind the scenes here at KSAT. They have worked their tails off for all of us this week, and without them, none of this would really happen. So thank you guys behind yes. the scenes. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you guys for leaving your families to be here with us and to help us get the information out. And, you know, we also want to thank all the essential workers out there traveling through all of this and all the emergency responders. And also thank you, all those neighbors helping neighbors. And our viewers for trusting us to inform you throughout the week. Good morning, America is up next. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.